Hey guys, welcome to uh, Office Hours. Uh, this is our fifth meeting. Let's get started. Today, uh, I wanted to, I guess, uh, as, a, as the, the first part of the Office Hours, when we talk about, you know, some some common topic and uh, uh, something specific that we usually base on questions. But today, what I wanted to share with you and demonstrate is the new pricing plan and the set of features that we just released. Uh, the plan is called Cloud Enterprise. It is now available in Backendless Cloud. All the features that went into Cloud Enterprise are also part of uh, uh, Backendless Pro, which is the standalone version of Backendless. And it is also part of Managed Backendless, which is um, the, the, the two enterprise versions of, uh, of the Backendless platform. Cloud Enterprise uh, is a uh, is a plan that has um, uh, higher limits for pretty much everything that uh, that that is included in Backendless, but also includes some enterprise level security features. So the, the that was the primary theme for uh, for the for this new plan is to provide enterprise level security uh, because we are getting a lot of. Um, requests for some of the security specific features and we decided to package them all in the cloud enterprise plan so here uh, what you see here on the screen is backendless console there are uh, a few uh, uh, changes that we made and then some some improvements in addition to introducing cloud enterprise one of the changes is fairly obvious if you already use backendless is that the main screen uh, there used to be a dashboard that we thought that does not provide a lot of informational value. And, uh, and we looked at what people are doing with backendless as far as, you know, where they navigate most frequently. And uh, this was the screen that a lot of people go to to grab their API keys or to start going through the configuration. So what we did is the main dashboard now is the app setting screen. So whenever you go to the database or you're navigating through backendless, when you click on the home icon, this is where you're going to be coming back. And in here, you can rename your application. You can provide the URLs whenever your application is published uh, for the uh, Google Play and the Apple App Store. You can publish your app into the marketplace right here. You can clone your app. So that's uh, these are the changes that you will see as far as the main dashboard goes. Now, with Cloud Enterprise, the uh, the plan if you were to go into the manage and then billing you'll see that there is this new cloud enterprise box that's the plan that you can switch to uh, and there used to be just three plans previously springboard cloud 9 cloud 99 and this is cloud enterprise now <clears throat> all the uh, the main functionality that is related to the security features which is what uh, going to be in the core of the cloud enterprise plan it will be under manage and then security so in here there are four tabs that you'll see and they are uh, as you can see audit log compliance panic mode and sessions so audit log is, is something that a lot of people were asking for specifically from the security perspective and uh, those uh, the, those inquiries were coming in from the uh, projects where they had a lot of developers and they were more enterprise grade projects and uh, the idea was that people needed to get uh, more of a, a sort of a track record of who did what within the application as far as the development team you know what developers did what and uh, how things were changing in the application so in here in this audit log you will see pretty much a, a track record for every single change that occurred within your application. And then these, every single change is going to be treated as an event. And then as you can see, this is a description of the event. This is uh, this column is the developer that made the change and you have the date and timestamp of when that change took place. And also you, you see the IP address where they were connecting and the actual device uh, meaning the actual browser that was used to initiate one uh, one whatever the change is <clears throat> these events can uh, are grouped into uh, various categories and you can see under filters you have the uh, events for app settings so if you select app settings then anything that is going on here on the app setting screen will be uh, categorized under app settings so as you can see here 
you know, we uh, th this is a demo application that is used by pretty much the entire backendless team. And as a result, there are a lot of different events. So here, for instance, you can see that uh, Mark, which is me, uh, these are the changes that I was making just to, to see how it is working. Now, if you go to security permissions, well, there are no security permissions, but if you change any of the security permissions, that's going to be those events will show up here user management, data management, these are fairly uh, self-explanatory. Uh, UI Builder has its own category. So whenever uh, anything is changing in the UI Builder by a developer, you can you can actually see who did what. And uh, whenever a situation arises that, you know, something got changed and uh, you don't know who made that change, this screen will give you the answers of who made those changes, uh, updated uh, specific pages, published, uh, container and so on. Uh, s same thing for cloud code, whenever uh, services are being changed. So here it is. Well, in, this, in my application, there are no changes here. But as far as the changes in the uh, in the cloud code, whenever a new method is created or a signature changes or uh, it is being uh, deployed, then those will be the events that uh, are trackable in uh, <clears throat> in the in the audit log okay now uh let's let's move on so here you can actually do the uh, search for the events uh, by uh, range like if you know that search something happened during a specific period of time that's where you specify that time frame and it will display all the events for the time frame you can download those logs or you can delete this log so and you can run the search as well so this is a, a highly functional area as far as tracking changes in your application whenever you have larger teams. So whenever, for the majority of developers, uh, when we looked in backend list, there is only one developer. Uh, and as a result, uh, you know what you did and you know what the changes are. And, and uh, whenever there is a team, that's going to be geared more towards enterprise and uh, more complex applications. Not to say that if you're a single developer, you're doing something that is not complex. No, I did not mean that. I mean that whenever there are uh, teams, uh, the, the, the degree of control that you need to have to know what, whenever things are changing becomes uh, quite different when you're just doing it by yourself. Okay, so that's, that's the audit log. And by the way, if there are any questions, please let me know. I'm still trying to find uh, the zoom window, <laughs> uh, just, uh, so, oh, here it is. So I can open the chat pod and just to see if any questions come through. No, I got it. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask any questions, um, uh, as they, as they, uh, arise. All right. Now the next, uh, tab here is the compliance tab. So the compliance tab, uh, is geared specifically towards HIPAA compliance and HIPAA compliance. If you're, are not familiar, it is, uh, sort of a set of regulations that are being imposed on uh, companies that deal with uh, private uh, information uh, for, uh, for patients. Uh, so whenever uh, data is stored, it is subject to certain regulations and then HIPAA, the whole HIPAA uh, regulation controls that. So if whenever, whenever you are working on the project in the, uh, in the healthcare industry, and you're storing personal data in Backendless, then uh, with Cloud Enterprise, you uh, you get the assurance that it is the backend is HIPAA compliant. And uh, <clears throat> in order to, and one of the things that HIPAA requires is to enter into a business associate agreement, which is BAA. And right here, just simply by selecting this checkbox and activating HIPAA compliance, you trigger that, and that functionality is also available in. Uh, backendless cloud enterprise plan. Uh, the, one of the questions that I see is uh, if this is the only plan that can have HIPAA. Yes, cloud enterprise is the only plan that ha that prov gives you an ability to enter into BAA. Uh, all other plans technically are HIPAA compliant because the the, the data is encrypted. Uh, it is. Uh, transmitted uh, entirely in, in an encrypted fashion. You have control for logging out all the users, which is one of the functions that I will demonstrate. But as far as being able to enter into BAA, that comes only with Cloud Enterprise. Uh, going back to audit log, I see there is a question. 
uh, the events on audit logs are updated to UIs. How about backend methods? What kind of details included methods deployed, and uh, etc. So, as far as the backend, yes, you, I can. You can see right here is there are four categories for the backend: cloud code general, and then API services, handlers, and timers. So, any changes that are occurring in the backend, as far as methods being created, code being deployed, those events are being tracked as well. So you you do get uh, that level of details as to who did what as far as uh, creation or modification of your cloud code or deployment. Okay, so uh, as far as HIPAA compliance, going back to that now, uh, I think it's it's fairly straightforward. And then once again, it applies on leave if you are working on a project in the healthcare industry. Next, panic mode. And panic mode is uh, sort of related uh, to to HIPAA compliance, but uh, it has a broader reach and meaning. So whenever you detect that something is going on that you may think that someone stole your credentials and they were able to log into Backendless Console or uh, you did not have enough security configured in Backendless and people started using your API keys and you did not protect your backend. And uh, API keys, by the way, is not a way to secure your backend. You secure your backend by uh, configuring security policy in backendless with permissions and assignment of permissions to various um, APIs and custom roles. But uh, it may happen that you did not do it properly and, uh, and you just detected some malicious use. So in this case, with Cloud Enterprise, you can activate the panic mode. And whenever you activate panic mode, uh, this is the, it basically lists everything that, uh, that is going to happen. So if you click on this, you can basically select uh, what you would like to happen. So you can log out all the app developers and they will be blocked uh, from accessing Backendless Console. You can also choose to block all API calls for this application and stop the timers. You can log out all the users that have a user account in your application. So these are the additional choices that you are given to, to uh, whenever you activate panic mode. And once, once that is done, you contact support and you say, guys, look, I activated panic mode. We have figured out, you know, you know who had access and now everything's good. Reactivate it and we, we can reactivate it for you. So that's, that's the panic mode. And this is kind of this ultimate uh, um, toggle where you just want to shut down pretty much everything and make sure that, you know, whatever suspicious activity is happening is stopped. All right, now next uh, section in the security uh, screen uh, is sessions. So in sessions, what uh, you get is you basically get the listing of all the sessions that are actually happening right now by various users in your application. Uh, as I was preparing to this, I, I discovered uh, a minor bug that is going to be fixed uh, in the, relatively quickly. Uh, and that is right now we actually <laughs> list all the users. And then if they don't have any sessions, so you click on this and it says no active session. So this screen will change where it will display all the users who actually have valid sessions uh, right now with with your backendless backend and that's that's the change that will happen so, but right now if you click on these you know there are no active sessions and it didn't really make sense to display this user so that's that's the change that will happen but the uh, whenever user has a session and you click show user sessions in this section you will see a, uh, a list of the actual user session and you will get the user token for that specific user so you can impersonate them and see what kind of data they're getting and you will see where they're logging in from and so on so all of that information is going to be uh, available to you for the current users that are that are logged into your application uh, very straightforward and uh, whenever you have a, uh, a specific user you can log out that specific user so they they will be forced to re-log in in your application by the way if you need to log out all users that functionality if you go into the users and it is in the login i believe then you have an option to log out all users so this this is the button that will do the massive logout of absolutely everyone who is uh, currently logged in to your application. 
A question just came, uh, let me read that. Are there any planned additions to the enterprise plan in the future? Features or services or limits that are not available in lower plans? Uh, yes, we, well, as you, as you know, we evolved back on this rather rapidly and there are different things and features that are being added. So yes, we're, we're definitely planning to evolve uh, not just cloud enterprise, but all our plans with, with new features uh, and uh, just uh, sort of as a teaser for a new feature that will be released. In fact, in our next release, it's going to be called, it's a new data storage, completely new data per persistence uh, systems, it's persistent system called Hive. And Hive is absolutely amazing. It's, uh, it's an all in memory database that supports specific data structures that you can store and uh, if, you, if you need to create leaderboards or store data in a sorted fashion uh, and store, um, just just wait. So Hive is, is, is coming and Hive will be available with various limits in, in all plans, of course. But specifically with Cloud Enterprise, yes, there will be additional features that are more uh, geared more towards enterprise deployments that will be uh, added just to the Cloud Enterprise plan. So that's, uh, that's a brief overview of Cloud Enterprise. The pricing is on the website. It is pricey. The, the price differential between uh, Cloud 99 and Cloud Enterprise is, uh, is rather big, but uh, security in the enterprise world does not come cheap. And uh, there, is, uh, there is a lot of underlying stuff that we have to do that really pushes our cost uh, fairly high as well with Cloud Enterprise. But uh, if you want to see all the details related to Cloud Enterprise, go to our pricing pricing page on the website and you will see a full breakdown uh, of, the, of the features and limits between various plans, including Cloud Enterprise plan. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the overview of Cloud Enterprise. And uh, now, uh, if you guys have any questions, either related to cloud enterprise or completely unrelated to anything else let's uh let's open the floor for questions and uh i'll be happy to answer any uh that that you have while you're thinking about the questions i'm gonna walk through some other things that have changed so missions as far as the button uh, was changed to product tour because uh we thought that this would be just better descriptive for people who are new to back endless uh missions they mean the, some people may question like what is missions and they, they may click on this out of curiosity but uh, product tour I think better describes because it is indeed a product tour that is gamified and you if you've gone through that you know exactly what what it is now uh, the next thing in the data section in the data browser uh, the search bar was completely redesigned so here if uh, I'm going to uh, a table called city and uh, if I want to find all the cities that contain, let's say, letter uh, A, right? So I say name, like, and it's going to be like this, right? So now I typed it in, I can press enter and it runs the search or I can press go. And then by clicking this, you actually get uh, a drop down with all the previous searches that uh, that you ran. So for instance, if I want to find all the cities from, uh, let's where country dot name equals, I don't know if we have United States, I'm sure we do. So United States, so here's United States, now click on the history and uh, so here is country name United States. Uh, if I star this, I wonder why, where, where, am I? oh, here it is. And then this is the search name like, so I can quickly run the, the previous query. Okay. And uh, I believe uh, it is sensitive to whatever you're typing. So if I start typing name, then all the queries that contain name will be uh, shown right here. And you can delete them from the previous searches. You can star them. So they are always going to be at the top. Uh, so this is a, a very nice addition to uh, to the search bar. Uh, let's see. I think there are a couple of questions that uh, came in. All right, one more question. The theme of the cloud enterprise plan is and will remain a higher limits, a higher limits, b security. 
I assume you are not planning to tier customer service levels per plan. The theme of the cloud enterprise is going to be features that are relevant to more uh, enterprise grade deployments and applications. So whether it is right now, it is security because we have identified a set of features that, uh, that the enterprises call for in order to uh, match their requirements. Okay, it must have, uh, they must be able to see, you know, who did what. They must be able to activate panic mode. Uh, they must be able to control sessions. Uh, there may be other features related to security, such as uh, integration with uh, reporting systems. Uh, in the single sign-on, for instance, and so on. So it doesn't mean that those features are going to be strictly in enterprise, but the fuller deployment, more complete implementation of those features will be featured in the cloud enterprise. So uh, I would not say that the higher limits is what uh, going to differentiate cloud enterprise. No. With, with backendless, the limits that you see is not the actual limit, it's what's included in the plan. Pretty much every single limit that you have starting from cloud nine and going up is expendable through the marketplace. And it may be cheaper to go through the function packs and expand those limits than actually jump to the next level up in the plan. Uh, it, doesn't, it, it, it doesn't always work out where if you go to the next level up in the plan, you get a better break on the price. Uh, but Cloud Enterprise, uh, the theme for that plan is a plan that uh, puts that make, puts your application in the spectrum where it is geared more towards enterprise deployment. One additional question here. In terms of limits, there is a limit we are hitting that is not on the plan details, which is 3,000 API calls per minute. Uh, is this fixed or is it higher in the enterprise plan? It is fixed. 3,000 API calls per minute is the limit that applied across the board for all applications in Backendless Cloud, regardless of the plan you're on. And uh, in order to overcome this limit, you need to be migrating not in the plans in the cloud, but to uh, either manage Backendless or Backendless Pro. That's the nat natural progression to, uh, to kind of move up in, uh, in in the deployment so uh, so that uh, that's the answer to that question all right let's see um, so I talked about the search bar and uh, and these, these are really the the, the, the the main changes there are a lot of bug fixes uh, and uh, but as far as the main changes this is uh, this is what what we have all right if you guys have any other questions I'll be I'll be more than happy to answer and do any kind of demos that you might want to see. All right, I cannot I do not see any new questions, so we can just uh, keep it short. Uh, I'll give uh, I'll give that time back to you. Uh, if you have any questions, please send them in advance. Uh, just if, if a question comes up, just shoot an email to info at backendless.com. We'll make sure to address any questions that we receive in the office hours that will be uh, Wednesday next week. But for now, since there are no more questions, uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be wrapping up now. Uh, I'll just hang on if a couple of minutes. I'll stop screen sharing. But uh, if a question comes up, I'll, I'll make sure to answer. But uh, if not... Thank you for uh, joining us and uh, we'll see you next week.